Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Mike, we've just had a, a very uh, intimate and productive conversation overlooking the walls of Jerusalem, uh, and it reminded me of uh, how deep and profound your tie is to the Jewish state. I uh, gave you a Bible as a gift, and I said that the people of the book have not had a better friend, and I mean it. And I want to also express my appreciation for our personal friendship uh, and everything that went along with it. So every word that I'm saying here is meant from the heart. Uh, I think that the first thing I should do is uh, also express my condolences on the deaths of uh, six American members of the MFO in Sinai. Um, you were a serviceman, and you know the pain of the loss of the people. They were killed last week in a tragic accident. I sent a note, but I want to say it directly to you. And they were killed along with fellow peacemakers from uh, France and uh, the Czech Republic. So we honor their memory, and our thoughts and prayers are with our families. Mike, we've worked together closely for uh, these po past four years, first when you were CIA director, and then as Secretary of State. And I think that from those two unique vantage points, you've seen firsthand evidence of what I've been saying for many years, that the United States of America has no better friend than the State of Israel. And you can attest to that in a variety of ways. But you also worked hard to prove the other thing that I'm saying uh, for many years, and you contributed to it personally, mightily, uh, that Israel has no better friend in the world than the United States of America. And over the last four years, uh, under President Trump and his remarkable team, um, led by you and uh, Ambassador Friedman uh, and Jared Kushner and others, uh, Israel, uh, Israel's alliance with the U.S. has reached unprecedented heights. Thanks to President Trump, the U.S. recognized Jerusalem as Israel's capital and moved its embassy here. Thanks to President Trump, the United States recognized Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights. Thanks to President Trump, the U.S. pulled out of the dangerous nuclear deal with Iran, placed crippling sanctions on the Iranian regime, and eliminated the mega-terrorist Qasem Soleimani. Thanks to President Trump, the United States proposed the first truly realistic plan for peace between Israelis and Palestinians. And thanks to President Trump, Israel was able to forge peace with three Arab countries, the UAE, Bahrain, and Sudan. Israel is deeply grateful for all that President Trump has done with you and the others of the team to strengthen Israel and to advance peace. And Israel is deeply grateful to you, Mike, for your unwavering support. You have, uh, under your leadership, uh, in uh, the state, the CIA and the State Department, you strengthened the alliance between Israel and the United States. In your tenure at the CIA, intelligence cooperation was made stronger than ever enhancing the security of both our countries. Under your leadership at the State Department, U.S. representatives at the U.N. and other international forums have unabashedly defended Israel with no uh, apologetics and no uh, artificial correctives, just defended Israel, defended what is right, defended what is true. America has firmly stood up to the perversion of justice at the ICC, and I want to thank you for your personal involvement in all these things. Everything that I said involves your personal contribution as well. And the U.S. rejected the assumptions about the legal status of Israeli communities in Judea and Samaria. Thanks to your tremendous efforts to carry out President Trump's maximum pressure campaign, Iran's feet have been held to the fire, and we have seen a reduction in the amount of uh, support that they are given to their various uh, proxies in the region. Your 12 points set the standard for what Iran needs to do if it wants to be treated like a normal country. Those who claim that your 12 points are either unnecessary or unrealistic simply want to give Iran a free pass. 
a free pass on Iran's atrocious human rights record, a free pass on Iran's support for terrorism, a free pass on Iran's aggression in the region, a free pass on Iran's menacing missile development, and worst of all, a free pass on Iran's plan to develop nuclear weapons with the express purpose of annihilating Israel and conquering the Middle East. The tyrants of Tehran deserve no free passes. And for all this, and for much more, Israel is grateful to you. I am grateful to you. Thank you, Mike, for your tremendous friendship and for your invaluable contribution to our alliance and to Israel's security and to the expansion of the circle of peace. Thank you, friend, and we hope to see you uh, next year in Jerusalem. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Prime Minister, it is, uh, it's an honor and a joy to be here with you uh, today. Uh, last night I, I had a chance to walk through the city of David. Uh, today you and I met looking out over the, uh, the old city. Uh, the peace, the increased prosperity, and the reduced risk to citizens all across the world and in the region and to here in the Jewish homeland that we have accomplished together is historic. And you should be proud that you have led your people in this direction. And uh, President Trump, I know, is proud of the work that we have done alongside of you. Um, we've done incredible things. It's remarkable you went through the list, whether it's the, the simple fact of recognizing the reality of uh, Jerusalem as the rightful, proper, true capital of Israel. Crazy that the United States hadn't done this uh, for decades. And then we moved our embassy there. How simple, how right, how just. Uh, I remember the stories uh, when I was serving in Congress that if we did this, there would be war. But in fact, peace is what has followed. Uh, you know, today I'll get a chance to visit the Golan Heights. The simple recognition of this as part of Israel, uh, too, was a decision President Trump made that is historically important and simply a recognition of the reality. Uh, and then you talked about the fact that for a long time the State Department took the wrong view of settlements. Uh, it took a view uh, that didn't recognize the history of this special place. And instead, now today, the United States Department of State stands strongly to the recognition that uh, settlements can be done in a way that are lawful and appropriate and proper. Uh, I'm proud of the three Abraham Accords. I'm hopeful and confident there will be more. Uh, it was because of your good work, because of the good work of the American team. It was because of great leaders in those three countries who did the right thing. Uh, and I'm confident that this will continue. It will continue because people are demanding peace. People have come to recognize all across this region that the right thing to do is recognize uh, the state of Israel as appropriate and proper and a great, wonderful partner for all things economic uh, and academic and security. Uh, I am confident that this, uh, this one-way movement, this one-way ratchet towards peace will continue. Uh, today I want to make one announcement uh, with respect to uh, a decision by the State Department that we will regard the global anti-Israel BDS campaign as anti-Semitic. I know this sounds simple to you, Mr. Prime Minister, it seems, uh, it seems like a, a statement of fact, but I want you to know that we will immediately take steps to identify organizations that engage in hateful BDS conduct and withdraw U.S. government support for such groups. The, the time is right. It doesn't sound simple. <laughs> it sounds simply wonderful to me. <laughs> Look, we, we want to stand with all other nations that recognize the, the BDS movement for the cancer that it is, and we're committed to combating it. Our, our record speaks for itself. Uh, during the Trump administration, America stands with Israel like never before. Indeed, the commitment we've made, the ironclad commitment we've made to the Jewish state uh, will continue. Uh, it was I'm confident that after our conversation this morning, we, we talked about how we can protect Americans and Israelis in the region from the regime in Tehran. You talked about this. They remain, we should not take for granted, they remain the foremost state sponsor of terrorism in all the world. And Israel has provided outstanding support to our pressure campaign, which we have no intention of relaxing. Indeed, just yesterday, the United States unleashed a wave of new sanctions on senior regime officials, an arm of the regime's oppression that poses a charitable foundation. It's known as Mashar. Uh, these actions mark the one-year anniversary of the regime's massacre of its own citizens in the city of Mashar, citizens who were peacefully protesting their government's corruption and abuses. 
Uh, we stand with the Iranian people against those abuses. We want peace and security for the entire region and for Israel in every respect. These landmark agreements we've secured over these last handful of weeks give new hope that Israelis and Palestinians can end their conflict. Uh, I also conveyed to the Prime Minister our support for the decision by the governments of Israel and Lebanon to begin discussions on the maritime boundary, uh, for which we are acting as a mediator and facilitator. We hope that this uh, uh, long-standing dispute uh, can be resolved. The negotiation has the potential to yield increased stability, security, and prosperity for both Israeli citizens and those in Lebanon as well. One more point. Uh, in August of this year, the United States supported the renewal of the UNIFIL mission. But we demanded some important conditions, and for good reason, for far too long, Hezbollah has enjoyed near total freedom of movement through UNIFIL's mandated areas of control. And with Iran's support, has built up an arsenal of weapons, fired missiles into Israel, dug attack tunnels underneath the Lebanon-Israel border, and more. The United States cannot abide by these actions against our trusted friend. Uh, the most recent renewal of the mandate included new reporting requirements on those attacks against peacekeepers and investigations of access denials. We are hopeful that these important steps will ensure UNIFIL can be a multilateral mission that actually fulfills its mandate. If not, we'll have to move in a different direction. Mr. Prime Minister, uh, it's always an honor to be here with you and to visit Israel. Uh, this is a place that has a special place in my heart and the heart of so many Americans. Uh, bless you. Thank you for your good work alongside the Trump administration. Uh, I wish uh, all of us many, many more years of successful partnership between our two countries. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. I think we can do this. Uh, this is a part we can go. Thank you. So we've just uh, heard there the comments from uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu.